Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. something uh, tonight uh, that we don't often do and that is uh, bring somebody out on the tabletop for a visit and if she sits still which I hope she will I will offer her a little tidbit please stay there Hopefully she'll take this and not be so weirded out because this is not normal. Normally snakes don't come out for a visit. Well, we got a big bite. Hopefully that will be the only biting that she does. I'll introduce you now uh, that things seem to be reasonably stable. This is Bitis caudalis uh, from South Africa. It's a species I've kept many times uh, in the past. It is one of the dwarf Bitis, which means that if they don't get very large. She will maybe grow to about 15 inches in length, uh, and that'll be all. The dwarf bitis will only get generally up to maybe two feet in length uh, compared to the giant, gigantic bitis or the macroviparra is the family now. Um, the genus is bitis. There's about nine species now, including two that are relatively rare. Uh, Bitis parviocula now has been in, in circulation and in, in zoo collections now for a number of years since 2008 and I was one of the first of a couple people that brought them into the U.S. Um, there's uh, the most recently discovered uh, species Bitis uh, heraldica uh, which is another mountain adder that's very, very rarely seen in, uh, in Ethiopia. Of course, we know our giant Bittis, uh, Bittis gabonica, Bittis nasicornis, or the rhino viper, Bittis aritans, of course, our, our friends, the puff adders, Bitis gabonica, which is the eastern puff adder. Good, she's uh, going to, looks like she's going to take it here on the tabletop for you. If you hand me the camera, I will attempt to uh, get a little bit closer. At one point I had, oh, a little stuck to the tabletop there, huh? Sorry about that. At one point I had five of the nine species here at the lair, but o over time and the difficulties getting these animals, since they're quite, uh, quite rare, um, unfortunately I can only obtain them occasionally and since the females have this nasty habit of eating the male after they mate, um, I've decided not to breed them. I just pick them up occasionally when I can find them. Uh, also, the babies, as you can imagine, are 
uh, like toxic mealworms, uh, not very big at all, and are very, very difficult to uh, uh, to work with and to get feeding and get them to the point where they will be uh, ready to eat on their own. Oops. Let's try to support the camera a little bit. It's, uh, it's an unusual thing that we do here at the lair when we bring these guys out on the tabletop because, you know, there's always potential snake hockey uh, going to happen. So we like to uh, avoid playing snake hockey. Um, okay, I'll have to pick it up and get it focused back in on the face. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, the antivenin for for all your African snakes, including covering most of the bitis, um, is really not very efficacious uh, for these dwarf species. Although that the chances of dying from a bite from one of these is very very small, uh, it's still not zero. You will certainly lose quite a bit of tissue. Uh, in the process because they have all the proteolytic enzymes that your normal bitus has. Um, there's even a species that I kept, uh, Bitus atropis, uh, which actually is primarily neurotoxic. It will actually paralyze certain cranial nerves that are involved with swallowing, blinking, your eyes dilating, um, you go into the emergency room and the doctor thinks you've had a stroke or a brain, you're brain dead, uh, all in actuality uh, you've been envenomed by a bitus atropos, and I, it's hard to tell but I think she's maybe sort of done, although she does have a very good appetite might be able to interest her in this. Oops, it's okay. It's okay, she's... This is the first time that she's done this and we've tried this, so if she's a little uh, scared and frightened, this is a little bit out of the ordinary. Okay, so at this point uh, I am going to uh, hook her up and hopefully she'll go quietly into her enclosure and we'll put the enclosure uh, back in its slot and she can go digest her meal. However, since we're here and we're looking, the male that I have is right next door and he's not going to come out but I'm sure he'll like this uh, tasty uh, morsel, since she didn't. So we will just let him go. I know Lori's arm is tired from holding the camera as still as she possibly can, so we'll just let him eat since we were able to watch her devour the, the whole morsel. And uh, um, I hope you enjoyed this very special treat. It doesn't happen very often especially uh, during the pandemic. But these are very special animals, uh, very rare here in the United States. Uh, very popular animals and apparently quite easy to come by in Europe, but uh, we're a bit over-regulated here, what can I say? So, uh, in that case, uh, we'll just let him do his thing and we'll call it a, a success.